Hi, welcome back to Speculative Dude Reviews. I'm your host, Speculative Dude. Now, one of my favorite uh, superhero franchises, if you could really call it a franchise considering it spans more than one character, is really Marvel's latest uh, series that led up to the Avengers, and is now leading into what will eventually be the second Avengers movie. Uh, now, honestly, the the movie that surprised a lot of people, including Marvel, was the success of the first Iron Man, due in large part to Robert Downey Jr. playing, making an excellent Tony Stark. Uh, now, when a lot of people, or when that first hit big, they re they kind of rushed a second movie before the Avengers came out. And I'll be honest, the second movie was not quite as good as the first one, but in my opinion, still enjoyable. Um, Due for reasons we won't go into, uh, uh, they replaced Rhodey, uh, and uh, but I think Don Cheadle's a very capable actor, so I you know I can't can't argue with you know with putting him in there. Uh, uh, I really liked the fact that they brought in War Machine in the second in the second movie, who was in the he was also in the third movie. Uh, though they changed his name to Iron Patriot, uh, there's kind of a running joke in there that pe that uh, everybody who surrounds it, or the this you know around him, can't stand the name Iron Patriot. They think it sounds cheesy, uh, but they keep going. Well, the, the the focus group said it sounded better than War Machine, but uh, but uh, he he's in here, but is ridiculously underutilized. However, you do get to see he, uh, him out of the suit. A lot, and you actually get to see Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man doing things out of the suit. And some people complained, "But that's not why we go to see an Iron Man movie." Well, he made a point in saying in the second movie, "I am the suit. We are one." You know, so shouldn't he be Iron Man even when he's not in the suit? You know, at least that's my feeling on it. Uh, now, uh, it starts out with him, you know, working in his shop, tinkering like he always does. Uh, and you find out that since the Avengers movie, they actually are working hard to try and put this into at least semi-continuity. Um, and when I say semi, because there are no other Avengers around. Uh, in fact, the what happened during the Avengers movie with New York is touched upon and basically mentioned that it happened and then kind of just swept away. So it's it's basically they're acknowledging that the Avengers movie and the other Avengers in that ha you know exist and that happened, but beyond that, they're still trying to keep Iron Man pretty much in his own in, in his own little world. Uh, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It, it does you know like I said, putting those little bits in there does answer answer you know whether they're acknowledging the rest of the you know the heroes or not. Although his you know appearance in the Hulk movie. Uh, to me, says that you know he, <laughs> you know he knows that you know they're they're these universes are together, not just coincidentally. But you know, putting that aside, um, as I said, he's working in his shop. He's you know he's tinkering, he's building, and you find out that since the the incident in New York in the Avengers, is uh, he's kind of sunk into not not exactly depression, but he's having anxiety attacks. And uh, and I've heard some reviewers, and this really bothered me, kind of poke fun at, at that, and you know, and, and also the fact that he makes some dumb decisions in here in this movie. He, now, now I don't suffer from anxiety or, or depression, though you know I think we've all had moments of being of you know, you know having those, you know whether whether it's a consistent thing or not. Uh, and here, he's interestingly enough shown that his coping mechanism with that is building more Iron Man suits. You know, it's it's what he does: tinkering, building, takes his mind off of his problems. And we all have our coping mechanisms when we have an issue. You know, sometimes it's positive, sometimes it's negative. Uh, there's a, there's even a joke at the beginning uh, where he's working on one, and. And uh, I think it's Pepper. Forgive me; it's been a little while since I've seen the movie. Uh, says, "Oh, for crying out loud! You know what? What is this? Mark 12? 
and, uh, and if you remember in the Avengers movie, the, the suit that he wears at the end is the Mark Seven. So he goes, what is this, the Mark Twelve? And he looks down at it, and I believe it's the Mark, either Mark Thirty or Mark Forty. So it shows that he's built a lot of these suits. You know, and, and uh, you know, like I said, that's because that's what he does. You know, you know, that's that's his coping mechanism is building things. I think that's actually not a bad way to show someone. In in the comic books, um, I don't know about him going through depression or any of that, though I think some it was shown some. His biggest vice was that he was an alcoholic, and he had to get, get over that. And in a way, that that's similar here because is he has a vice, a problem, you know, that he needs to overcome, and he has a coping mechanism to help him deal with that. Um, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I'm an expert on alcoholism or you know, depression or that, but it did bug me to see some some reviewers make light of that. You know, also the well, he makes dumb you know he makes dumb decisions. We all make dumb decisions. That doesn't mean we're all stupid people. You know, when, especially if you're angry. You know, you may we you know you know you've all heard the thing the saying that you know you make dumb decisions when you're angry. You know, well. You know, he 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 announces to the to the world his home address. You know, now some people probably already know it. Some people already know that hey, that big mansion over there, Tony Stark lives in it. You know, it's but you know he gives you know he gives the Mandarin uh, the you know the supposedly the villain uh, uh, you know his home address and gets attacked. Although I'll be honest, I don't get the feeling that. Tony Stark was that private a person that he ever really kept where he lived a secret. So I, I don't think it would have been that hard to find him in the first place. But uh, for the purposes of the movie, okay, he gives him his address. And, okay, yeah, that wasn't the brightest thing in the world, but he... Uh, there's a scene where... Now, John Favreau did not direct this. He directed the first two. But he did stay on to... to, to uh, uh, play the role of... Uh, Tony Stark's bodyguard slash driver, uh, Happy, and he, you know, he, uh, you know, he's hurt at the beginning of this movie due to something that that the Mandarin does, and uh, you know, Tony gets mad. You know, he announces it. He says, "You want to fight? Here, I'm sitting here waiting for you, basically, essentially." And uh, you know, yeah, it wasn't the smartest move in the world, but you know, there's two things that. Uh, you know, a character like that is going to do. Either say, hey, I'm sitting here waiting for you, or B, I'm coming for you. You know, one of the two. You know, this is a movie, you're not going to have him sit here and just go on with his life. So, yeah, it wasn't the brightest thing in the world to do, but it's very much in character and in tone with the movie. And very much like what most people would do if we had the option, or if we were in that same situation. We're not just going to move on with our lives. Now, uh, I will say that uh, Guy Pierce and Ben Kingsley do a great job in this movie. Um, you find out, now, a lot of people complain that the Mandarin, uh, about what they did with the Mandarin. Now, while I find the Mandarin to be an okay character from, you know, from the comic book, there was one thing that, that bugged me that a lot of people, a lot of people complained the, about what they did with him. I thought he was an okay character, but to use his character in he, in the movie the same way he's used in the comic book would have been a little more difficult to pull off. Um, specifically, the Mandarin is a villain because, or, he, or I should say, he has powers because he has these rings, which he found off of a spaceship which was flown pretty much by alien space dragons when he uses the these rings, they you know it's a technology that appears to be very magical in, in base. To use those in this movie in the setting, which whereas uh, Iron Man, at least the movies have always been not necessarily scientifically sound, but scientifically based, would have been a little fantastic. It adds a little bit more of a fantasy element that I don't think they were going for. Uh, versus the sci-fi tech element, which is what it essentially happened. So, because of that, uh, I really did like what they did with the Mandarin in being a figurehead. You know, 
know, he wasn't the act, he was the, you know, the forefront. And it was interesting the way, you know, considering what we know about terrorists, you know, terrorist videos that you see pop up online or in the news, uh, the videos that he put out as, you know, to, as warnings, if you will, uh, those were very interesting and done very much in those manners. Then you find out later that it's it's all a hoax. Uh, he's you know, uh, it, like I said, Ben Kingsley. Just once again, I won't spoil what happens. I try to keep spoilers to a minimum. But it really is enjoyable when you see when you see Ben Kingsley's character not as the Mandarin. You, you, and when I first watched it in the theater, uh, you see him, you know, you know, admitting that the Mandarin. Okay, I, I guess I am going to have to have some spoilers here. Um, admitting that the Mandarin is not who, at least not who everyone thinks he is. You know, he's not the head, you know, the, the villain, you know, the bad, the main bad guy. Um, and you see uh, Ben Kingsley kind of stuttering, falling over himself. Whereas when you see him as the Mandarin, you know, he seems very imposing, very grim. Uh, and then you see him, uh, you know, being this kind of almost goofy. And when you see Tony, you know, basically come there to arrest him, or you know, however, get revenge, basically, you know, they don't really say. He doesn't really say when, you know, he could be there to kill him for all, all he knows. Uh, they don't really, you know, Tony. It's not really known, you know, what's Tony going to do when he comes face to face with him, which is interesting. But uh, so he is finally face to face with him, and you see him kind of stumble and fall over himself and. You know, I was like, you know, this isn't, you know, he reveals that he's not really the guy. But at that point in the movie, I didn't know whether he was doing that because he knew Tony was there and was just trying to throw him off guard, which isn't true. It turns out he is really just this goofy oddball, um, you know, who's been, who's been playing the role of the Mandarin. But in that scene, you you probably have to wonder just a little bit, you know, okay, is he being serious? Is he, you know, is he really a genius who's trying to throw Tony off, or is he just, you know, this strange little guy? Uh, like I said, the latter, but like I said, it's an interesting scene. Uh, now, Tony, as I said, you see him without the suit a good chunk of the time. Um, his home is blown up, you know, by, by an attack. Uh, I, I will keep saying by the Mandarin because uh, just until we get until you get to the end, but uh, because that's who he thinks he's fighting. So you know, he's you know there he's, the Mandarin's people attack and you know you know uh, there's so much that uh, you know goes on that he basically has to escape. And when he you know it, it, it's not really said. But it's kind of implied that he basically, you know, kind of blacks out, and the suit kind of flies itself for a while. Um, once again, not ex not implicitly said, but you get the feeling that's what happens. And he basically wakes up, you know, in the Midwest, you know, in the North. I, I think it's Wisconsin or Pennsylvania. I, I once again forgive me for not exactly, but he's he knows he's headed towards this area where this where the first, the same incident that hurt Happy has happened before. Now, this I won't go into because it's it's actually a good a good plot point, but um, he goes to investigate and actually does some some fairly good detective work, you know, which most people don't really think of Tony Stark as doing, but it's it was it was fairly good. Um, but while he's there, you know, he's without his home, uh, you know, his home's pretty much been blown up. He's all his, you know, equipment is you know buried in you know in his basement, you know, which is you know under a crumbled house. Uh, he doesn't have access to his tech like he normally would. He's got one suit that's running out low on power, you know, and that was the one he was wearing. Uh, so he tries to, you know, and while he's doing this investigation, there's there's this kid who comes across him. The kid, you know, he recognizes him, but it's interesting because it's clear that the kid is a fan of what he does, but. It's almost like the kid doesn't really believe that he's Tony Stark. It's like, okay, maybe. You know, I, I might be able to buy that. But uh, when he, you know, he asks the kid for help, and uh, it is a rather interesting scene because they don't, they don't ever really bond. 
Uh, you know, this isn't one of those, you know, Tony gets a sidekick for a while. He doesn't. He, he, I mean, he asks the kid for help, and the kid does help him, but it's, it's not in a very cliched way. So it's, it, it, there are some cliches, but not, not like you, you might see in a lot of other films in the past. Um, but while he's doing this, you know, he hasn't been building a lot of stuff. He's been doing this, and with people, you know, dying, his house blowing up. You know, he's you know starts to have these panic attacks again, and he also thinks that uh, Pepper is you know there's a chance that Pepper is dead, you know which isn't true. You find out she is alive, you know. Uh, but you know he he you know with all this stuff going on, he starts to you know the anxiety starts to hit him, and you know and he you know he kind of tells this to the kid out of frustration, you know, leave me alone. This is you know I you know I don't you know I don't need you around. I don't want to you know. You know, I don't want help. You know, he's, he is one of those guys that, you know, he doesn't want help. But, uh, you know, it's, I guess there's one point where, because he builds things, the kid kind of equates that with, because he builds machines, he equates that with being a mechanic. So he says, uh, at one point he says, are you a mechanic? And he, Tony just kind of like, uh, yeah, I guess so. You know? And uh, when he starts having these panic attacks, he said, uh, you know, he says, what would you do if you're, you know, he's trying to figure out so much, so much is going through his head. You know, and I think we've all had that time where our, our brains are just kind of spinning. You know, and the kid says, well, what would you do if you were, you know, if you were home? He says, I would build something. He says, well, then why don't you do that? And it kind of dawns on him. He's like, yeah, that's what he was doing to help him before, to get his mind off things before. And if that's what he needs to do to help this situation, you know, it is a little different. You see him go to the hardware store, you know, you see him do these little things. Yeah, he doesn't have access to his tech that he normally was, but it, he actually, it was interesting to see him. He builds a pair of taser gloves, you know, you actually see him carrying a pistol. You know, it's, you know, there's a few things in there that it's, you know, yeah, it's not very Iron Man-like, but if, I mean, think about this now. Normally, I don't like to equate superheroes to one another, especially from different uh, combo companies, but um, it, Bruce Wayne is a great example, as Batman is a great example of this. Now, Bruce Wayne, say he's cut off from the Batcave, he's still going to try and find ways to do what he does best, you know, even if it's he has to go to a store and buy something, you know, to help him. You know, and I don't think anybody would argue if Batman tried to do that. You know, it's, you know, he would... You know, he would figure out a way, okay, now I'm not really saying Iron Man and Batman are alike, but in some ways they are. They're both, you know, they're both ridiculously rich, they both use their wealth to try and, uh, you know, to try and fight, you know, fight crime. You know, so, you know, I mean, yes, there are plenty of differences, but uh, I think one thing that bugs me is a lot of people are like, oh, that doesn't make any sense that, you know, Tony Stark would do this. Uh, it's like, well, you know what? I think Bat. I think Bruce Wayne would, and if, you know, and if you can argue that Bruce Wayne would do that, why wouldn't Tony Stark do it? What, just because he's, you know, he seems to be a bit more arrogant than Bruce Wayne. And I don't buy it. You know, I think this is very much what, you know, someone really trying to do the, you know, really trying to do would do. You know, um, eventually, he does charge up his suit. He goes. You know, he saves people, you know, the president, there's a, you know, a great scene at the end with, uh, you find out that, uh, you know, they've given people, you know, this, this serum, which, which it will do one of two things, either your body will accept it, and you will basically gain, you know, enhanced strength, you know, regenerative powers, you know, or your body will pretty much explode, or which is it is the incident that hurt Happy as someone basically explodes, you know, and that might sound a little ridiculous, but in the movie it makes a little more sense. But uh, you find out that you know Guy Pierce, he's given, uh, you know, he's given an injection of this stuff to Pepper, and you know, the only you know, now they don't ever say if there actually is an antidote, so to speak, you know, an anti, you know, extremist. Uh, but he try, you know, he tries to play Tony Stark up for, you know, you know, I'll do what I, you know, if you don't do what I say, I'm going to let, 
you know, I'm going to let her die. Well, at the end of the movie, her body accepts it, and she actually is the one who ends up kicking his butt. So it's, it is rather it is rather funny. But, uh, you know, it, the scene at the end where the big fight is happening, and most of it, Tony doesn't have a suit on. Um, is actually, in my mind, a bit refreshing. I think it's, uh, you know, really great. Rhodey, uh, you know, he and Rhodey have to save the president. You know, uh, who's, you know, who's been kidnapped and placed inside the Iron Patriot armor. For some reason, you know, Rhodey gets it back and they finish off the, you know, everything. But it just, it... In my mind, it's not as good as the first Iron Man, but I thought it was, you know, I thought it was better than Iron Man 2, which I did enjoy, mind you. I just didn't think it was quite as good. But it, overall, though, you know, solid performances, acting, and a good escalation for a character. You know, you get to see what's referred to in the comic book as the Shellhead Brigade, you know, all the, you know, a bunch of Iron Man suits. You know, you get to see the, you know, if he's, if the one he was wearing was the Mark 40, or the one that you see him working on at the beginning of the movie, is the Mark 40, you know, what about the Mark, you know, 8 through 39, you know, well, you get to see those, you know, and it's actually quite good, in my opinion. You know, I, you know, I highly recommend this if you've, if you'd like the series at all, you know, any of the Avengers movies, you know, I really hope that, uh, you know, I really hope, I have high expectations for Avengers 2, you know, of course, I did for Avengers One, and it totally met my expectations. I, you know, with uh, for anybody who do who doesn't know the character's name, who was kind of hidden in the shadows at the end, his name is Thanos. Who's you know, go look that up on you know, and you'll you'll see the, the history of that character. That's amazing. Uh, one of the you know greatest possible villains. But you know it. You know I you know I can't wait to see the rest of these movies, they should be, you know, really enjoyable. So, until next time, that's my opinion. Take it for what it's worth. Speculative Dude, out.